If you enjoy this episode of the Workflows Photography Podcast, hit that subscribe or follow button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast player you are listening from. I don't know. It doesn't scare me. I, I don't know if it's in my blood or what, but I get pumped up by that. Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. As a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, colorblindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child, Workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life, and that's why I'm so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things Workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that could be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Put the camera down for a little, connect the headphones, and get to work with Workflows. Get in on the conversation by joining the Imagine community today. Imagine the possibilities. Ashley Jean is a self-taught traveling professional photographer and public speaker based in Northern Virginia. Ashley earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Rehabilitation Science from George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia in 2018. The plan was to begin her Doctor of Physical Therapy school the following year. However, her plans changed quickly after she was in high demand for photography services upon graduating. In 2020, she made the ultimate decision to pursue photography full-time. Ashley first discovered her passion for photography when her mother gifted her with a camera for Christmas. Since then, she has been capturing photos of brands, couples, families, events, and more. It brings her absolute delight to experience people's true personalities and authentic emotions while capturing their photos. Her ultimate dream is to inspire and mentor others on what she has learned throughout her journey in entrepreneurship and to travel the world, bringing joy to others in the form of photography. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Ashley Jean. Hello, Ashley. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's Friday. It's my daughter's eighth birthday. and. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to... Happy birthday to her. <laughs> thank you. She actually asked to go to Panera Bread for her birthday dinner. Of Classic, all the places that she could pick, <laughs> in, you know, and the funny thing is I taught her that, like, dipping bread in chicken soup is delicious. Mm -hmm. So now that's her favorite thing to do. And so she wants to go and get a bread bowl and just, like, two birds, one stone. It's all together. <laughs> I love so. it. I love it. <laughs> nice yeah. and simple. Yeah. Nice and simple. Yeah. So uh, we're going to dive into this because we've got, it's going to be a fun conversation. I'm going to ask the same question <laughs> that I ask every guest in the beginning. That is, what is one thing that you do for your photographic process that has saved you time? The, the, the part behind the camera that has saved you time? I would say my workflows. So Imagine AI has played a tremendous part in my post production workflow. Well, let, um, let's start let's start before we even get to the post production cuz we're uh, going to get to that too. Uh -huh. Let's talk about like literally behind the camera. You've got the camera in your hand, you're 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 you know, you're photographing your clients. What do you do at that point that is that saves you time? I like to shoot everything in camera so mm -hmm. that it saves me a lot of time in the post production process. I make sure I typically would say I underexpose so that if I need to go back and overexpose later, I can. Whereas if I were to overexpose, it'd be a lot harder to kind of fix things in the end. But that's kind of what has saved me a lot. I'm a very natural editor. So it saves me a lot of time in the back end when I just get everything right in camera. So I love it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, re recovering highlights is obviously way more difficult than recovering shadows so yeah so underexposing in my opinion is definitely the way to go as well so it's a good that's a good choice <laughs> yeah yeah so so then moving into the business side of things now what is one thing you do for your business again mm -hmm. not editing we're going to get to editing soon but what is one thing you do for your business that for saves her. you time or money or, or things like that so what i like to do with my clients before we even get out on to the field to take pictures. 
I like to meet with every one of them individually. I do something called a creative strategy call, where before we even meet for that, I have them send me a Pinterest mood board. I kind of want to see what type of photos they're attracted to. Nice. And then that way, I'm also able to ask them questions about why were they attracted to that? Maybe what their vision is for their shoot. And if they don't have a vision, that's what I'm here for. I'm able to kind of help them with that. We go over props. We go things that fit the vibe that they're going for, outfits, so that when we show up to the shoot, everybody knows, okay, this is exactly what's going down. This is exactly what you can expect. And that saves a lot of time because when I first started out in undergrad, when I didn't really have the grasp of running a photography business, I would just have people meet me at a location and we would kind of discuss everything there. And of course, that would take about, you know, probably a good 15 minutes deciding, okay, this outfit is going to be shot here. This outfit is going to be shot here. These are the poses we're going to be focusing on. So as I continued throughout my photography journey, I figured that having these creative strategy calls with them was a perfect solution to the issues that I was facing with people coming to photo shoots unprepared. Um, and then also just on the other end, me being prepared to shoot them. So that's like a really important part of my process to save me some time. And also just to get to learn my clients on a more personal level. Yeah, it's a your answer was very similar to one and it came in a very different way, of course, but like but similar to what Mike Morby said in a previous episode as well, where he said client expectations, you know, he sets that ahead of time. Yes. And that is the cornerstone of his business from start to finish. So I, I, I definitely think that's a, a great approach. I uh, So I've got a question, though, about your mood boards. So yes. you use Pinterest, right? As you said. I love it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used a whiteboard type system for the mood boards so that you can work collabor collaboratively with your clients in real time, even if needed, where mm -hmm. like Google, for example, in the Google Drive mm -hmm. ecosystem, they have Jamboard, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's just a virtual whiteboard. You can drop in pictures and colors and all that stuff. Sure. Apple just came out with their own version in wow. the latest Mac OS and iOS called Freeform. Freeform? I think it's called. I'm just going to check real quick. Yes. <laughs> um, Freeform. And it basically works the same exact way. And it just like in Apple's beauty, you just like share the freeform link or, you know, your freeform board or whatever you could want to call it with your sure. client, then it's real time. But so like there's two options that for, you know, if the if your client's in Google or the Apple ecosystem, you've got a virtual whiteboard and you can literally do that with outside of Pinterest, which is pretty cool because it unlocks a whole bunch of, you know, things. Have you ever considered something like that? I haven't. I would say the closest thing I've used that might be similar to that is called Millinote. And okay. it's it's a system where you can collaborate, but I don't know if it is live, just like you mentioned with mm -hmm. Google or Apple. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out because I really actually <laughs> like that feature. I think that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Freeform, I, I've been having a lot of fun with lately with it's brand new, like literally in the past two weeks. Wow. We're recording this in <laughs> January, but so like beginning of January is when is when is when that came out. So that's brand new. But Jamboard's been around for forever. So uh -huh. Jamboard does something pretty cool for uh -huh. for educators is is like Google has a digital whiteboard product that people uh -huh. that schools can buy. And if the students are on the Jamboard, they can have it right go up right on the digital whiteboard the screen. screen. Pretty cool. Yeah, completely cool. unrelated, but it's so cool. I'm gonna check it so, out. I'm gonna check it out. Okay. So we talked about the photographic process. We talked about the business. What is one thing now, again, not imagine what is the one thing that you do for your editing that has saved you time? I have certain presets that I've made for myself that I use in Lightroom. I also mm -hmm. would say I typically use the same settings all around just because I do shoot a certain way. So I kind of have like my go-tos and the presets definitely help me. I've created the presets where I kind of just like, I, I noticed I was doing the same edits over and over you know <laughs> certain exposures yeah. certain saturation so mm -hmm. i just created certain presets that i can at least use as a, a base and then i go from there so that's definitely helped out tremendously especially for a, a event photography i usually deliver all the photos from events so when i have to go back and edit it definitely helps having that preset there to help with my editing process yeah you know I, so Pre pre imagine when I was doing a hundred percent of the editing in Lightroom, I you know mm -hmm. as as many other photographers have found, Lightroom 
can be slow if you put on certain settings, right? So the more local yes. adjustments you do, the slower it gets. Yeah. Even putting on lens calibration, right? Slows Pretty down cool. Lightroom's develop module. So one of the presets that I created in the same way to, to save me time later on, which, sure. or in the editing process overall is I don't edit with lens correction on. I then add a preset that just applies lens correction and I use the paint thing and auto sync it or whatever across the board. Right. And now lens correction is on and then I can go back and like make sure that everything else is good because once you add lens correction, everything changes a little bit. So cool. um, that's something that I've always done now with Imaginal. Don't do that anymore. So that's nice. But <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, that's great. You know, you know, having having presets for different things, even even now, even with Imagine, there's still certain presets that or that you could create that could do some final things for your mm -hmm you know, for your, for your work, especially with the AI tools that are now built into Lightroom too. You can make some cool presets for that too. So yeah. 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 It's awesome. great. Yeah. Okay. So what is now one thing you do after a session? The session's all done. You've, 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 you've called it, you've, you've edited the photos. You're either about to deliver, or maybe this is part of the delivery process, but it's one thing you do after the session. That saves you time. Yeah. Or or even increased business. Anything that has saved you time or increased business or just enhanced your workflow in general. I think organization is a really big thing for me. 100%. So yeah. <laughs> just making sure that um everything is when I export my files from Lightroom, the first thing I like to do is put everything on two hard drives that I have and then also into a cloud-based system. Good. So that way, in case a client says, hey, can you fix this for me or can you re-edit this? I have it there. So yeah. I would say this is more of like me just thinking ahead, but just making sure that I'm organized on the back end before anything even goes out. And then before I even deliver the gallery to my clients, I always, I'm very personable. I like getting to know my clients on that personal level. So I always write everybody kind of like a little note before I deliver their gallery. I use Pixie Set to deliver it. And I would say just that's definitely how people have noticed that little touch, just saying like, hey, like I really enjoyed, you know, shooting with you. And I may remember like little things that happened during the shoot that I put in there. So that's definitely helped with business. But I would say overall, the organization aspect, just making sure that everything's organized on the back end and my hard drives has helped a lot. Because what I've also mm -hmm. noticed is that so, I, from the people that I mentor, some people just don't know how to organize their files. And then when it goes back to trying to look for something, it's hard to find them. So I have a system that I use to kind of help me stay organized in that aspect. And that definitely saves a lot of time in the future. <laughs> So, so let me ask you, because I'm definitely an organized person. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm right there with you. And if I see a Lightroom catalog that is not organized, it drives me bonkers. So yeah, <laughs> are you a one catalog per client, per month, per quarter, per year, or are you a one giant catalog person? The first. <laughs> so one per, first one per client. Yeah, I like to organize okay. by basically by month. Just because it's months. easier for me. Okay. Yeah, months and then year in the year in the overall picture. It's easier okay. for me to go back and find stuff that way. Sure, sure. And now are you a folder or a collection person? I'm a collection. <laughs> I kind of mixed it up, not going to lie. Mix it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I So I'm, for, on my end, I am a, I don't know why, but I think it's just the sanity of having, for me, just like one catalog. So I just have one giant catalog forever. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've tried to split it up and I keep going back to the one, but, but okay. I am a, I am a keep my folders organized by certain year, month, day type of structure, but then I use collections heavily and collection sets. So I mm -hmm. can always find my client work and stuff as needed one way yeah. or another. So cool. Okay. We're going to do something fun. I started doing this not long ago and yeah, pick a color. <laughs> green. This is a lot, of fun. This is a lot of fun. Which one? Which one? Gr green. <laughs> green. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. And what I like to say is you can't blame me if you get a question that is, I'm going to <laughs> shuffle through this deck 
And you are going to tell me when to stop, and whatever I stop on is the question that you are about to answer. Are you ready? Stop it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> tell me. Tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> wow, you got pretty close to the end. Okay. <laughs> what are most people afraid of that does not scare you? Does not scare me. Well. <laughs> I'm That's afraid of snakes, by the way. Snakes. Oh. Yeah, I don't like snakes either. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that does not scare me. That's a really great question. Because I'm, I'm afraid of certain things that I know other people are afraid of. I would say... That's a really great question. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Like if you were near like a tiger and people are running from the tiger, would you be scared out of your mind and run from the tiger too? I probably would. If I see other people probably. running, I'm probably going to run. I would say, I think this is like super random, but okay. um, All right. playing the piano in front of a crowd, there okay. might be, you know, some people that they're probably, I don't know. It doesn't scare me. I, I don't know if it's in my blood or what, but. I get pumped up by that. I grew up playing the piano since I was two, and my parents got me started at a really young age, and I just really enjoy getting in front of people and playing the piano. And granted, that I haven't done fantastic. it in a while, but mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I grew up being forced to play clarinet. Forced and to play? And I, I actually got into Berklee College of Music for playing clarinet. And I was, I was very good, but I absolutely hated it because I was forced oh, to do it. Man. Yeah, I always and I I play a lot of including piano very lightly, but I've always said that like if I could go back, mm -hmm. and I got to choose again or had the option to choose, I would have picked piano because it's that type of instrument where you could just go wherever, and if you see a piano, it's just like hey, Beautiful. I can play this, and everybody wants to sing along and dance along to it. And it's just a, you know, it's whereas like a guitar is a, is very similar, but a guitar. You don't typically just see it out mm -hmm. like a piano is. So yeah, yeah. I like that answer. I like that answer Thank a lot. You. Thank so. you. All right. If you are enjoying this episode, please take a moment to leave us a review at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Podchaser. We truly appreciate it. Now, this question that I'm going to ask you is pretty deep. I want you to look at your business from a 30,000 foot view down. Mm -hmm. Can you share an outline breakdown of your workflow from lead to delivery? Yes. So I will go through my branding process because I am, I'm currently rebranding to focus on working with little branding clients. So I really want to help businesses with increasing their visibility online on social media. So if a lead reaches out to me through my website, they'll reach out through Dubsado. So they'll complete that form through, which includes the date that they want to shoot, which has to be about four to six weeks out from the actual date they choose for their session. I also ask them questions about how long they've been in business. I only work with certain types of businesses, so service and product-based businesses. I also like to ask um, if they're ready to make the investment of where my prices start at, because nobody's time wants to be wasted. I don't want to get on the phone with somebody or have them get on the phone with me and I say my pricing and they're like, oh, I, I didn't know that that's what my price, your pricing was. So just to save people time, I always ask a question on my form, just asking, are you ready to make the investment? I always like to also ask, what's the number one thing that they're struggling with in business right now? And uh, the number one answer that I always get is that people are really struggling with creating content for social media. People don't know what to post. They're having trouble maybe connecting with their audience. And that's something that just also comes naturally to me. I can just look at your business and say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is the type of content we're going to capture. You know, this is, this is the plan that we're going to do for your business. So once they fill out that form on the back end, my virtual assistant and I, we review everything. And once we figure out that it's a match, we invite them to schedule a discovery call. And that's typically 30 minutes. If it's not a match, we'll either give them a option to schedule a different type of 
session with us, maybe like something that's on like a lower tiered package, or we'll recommend them to another photographer that may be able to fit their needs a little better. I'm all about community. So referring people is like super huge to me. If I know that I can't do it, I will definitely pass it along to my photography buddies. But once somebody gets on that discovery call with me, this is where I like to get to know a little bit more about them. So why they started their business. We talk about the struggles that they're having. I tell them about my process and what they can expect with me. And then this is where we go over pricing. And then once they decide if they want to move forward, let's say, yes. So I would send them a proposal, which includes the, of course, the contract and the invoice. And then this is where the fun part starts. <laughs> so we, after all that is signed, um, I send over an onboarding welcome email. So I created a special welcome guide through Canva that kind of maps out everything throughout the process, their homework. And that homework mm. is having them fill out a brand a vision discovery form. So this is where I get really deep with my clients, just really learning like everything that it is about not only them, but of course their businesses as well, because your who you are kind of shapes how your business is as well. And especially if you're a personal brand, you want to kind of tie those two together in a way. And for people who are trying to grow and engage on social media, it's really important, you know, to show up for your audience and just like knowing who you're marketing to, your ideal client, you know, the social media platforms that they're on. We get into the nitty gritty of all of that. And then, of course, I have them create that Pinterest board where they put photos that they're attracted to in there. And then I review everything. And then this is where we get on that creative strategy call for about 30 to 60 minutes. And this is where I really get to meet my clients like one on one virtually. We do it over Zoom. So it's really just very comfortable. You have people who come in like dressed up, you know, they turn on their cameras sometimes. And there are other people who come just really dressed down. And what I like about that is that they're they're already comfortable with me on Zoom. Mm. And I'm like, you know, don't even, you don't have to turn your camera on, but it's always nice to, but they can just come as they are and, you know, judgment-free zone. This is where we really get deep to talking about everything. And there are some people that I've shared some really deep things with me that has helped them. It kind of helps me with telling their story, which is really fun. So it's always nice to learn those things about my clients because then I'm able to kind of shape their photo shoot in a way that brings that out in a way that's comfortable for them. And then, of course, we have the photo shoot. I always send some tips a few days prior to them so that they're prepared. I have a photography studio in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. So majority of my clients come and shoot there. It's um, very cozy. I love being able to give my clients like an overall experience. I'm very much a snack person. So I make sure I have snacks on deck. I have some mm -hmm. drinks there. If we're doing a half day shoot, I like to get food catered to the space. I typically have a team that I work with. So typically bring in the videographer, have an assistant, making sure that everything's taken care of. Sometimes if the client needs a stylist, the stylist will be there. They get their hair and makeup done at the space. So it's really convenient for the client to just, they just come as they are. They just show up and then I take care mm -hmm. of the rest. And then usually after the shoot is completed, I like... Another part of the personal aspect, I like writing a thank you note for all of my clients. So if it's something that I learned about them throughout the process leading up to this point, I'll write it in the card. And just also just saying thank you for choosing me to capture this, you know, this part of your journey for you, because it's definitely an honor. I definitely don't take lightly for, you know, to capture people's journeys and their businesses. And then, of course, we get to the post-production aspect. Usually when I get home... <laughs> Stick that memory card in my computer. And the first thing I do is there's another AI system called Aftershoot. So I typically mm. put it through there to call my photos. And then from there, that's when I take it into Imagine AI. Once I once the clients choose the photos that they want, I'll go back and put the photos through Imagine AI, do the light touches and Lightroom, and then I'll typically deliver the gallery up to two to three weeks after their selections are made. And then I have a whole offboarding workflow where they're sent a goodbye guide that basically, you know, outlines like, hey, the, the process is over. You know, our time together has come to an end um, just to make sure that we're closing out projects properly. So people know like 
okay, like I have everything that I need. I got my deliverables. And just also to say thank you again. And then the last part of the process is just checking in at least 30 days and 60 days afterwards to see that the photos that we provided them, the goals that they set when we had that creative strategy call are being met. So whether it's increasing their visibility online, um, whether they were trying to reach a certain revenue goal or whether they were using the photos for a certain project, just making sure that those goals were met. So I know that was super lengthy. <laughs> But nope, that's, that's kind the, of like the, the in-depth view yeah. of my process. That's fantastic. Earlier in the beginning, you said that you actually want to help them with their social media strategy beyond just capturing the photos, right? And I think that's mm-hmm. really interesting because, and, and that's something that, that I know like a lot, of, a lot of personal brand photographers try to do, but not everybody is successful at doing. So I, I love the fact that you are taking your knowledge of how to market on social media and your knowledge of business and you're learning about your clients' businesses in order to help them determine and plan out what they will do. I feel like that's a huge value add to your business, which which also means, you know, not not just a value add, but also, you know, being able to say, we can do this and I've got a videographer and it X amount more money for the videographer and so on and so on. Like it's upsells and value adds type of thing to be able to to help them actually have content to walk away with beyond just the assets you've created of stills. So that's a beautiful thing. Your workflow is fantastic. You you know, yeah, yeah, definitely. You definitely are putting the personal in personal brand photography. (laughs) I think it's it's great. It's great. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) We've now talked about a bunch of business related things, a bunch of flow related things. I'm wondering now, on the AI side, what does the future of AI in photography look like to you? I think it's going to shape the future of photography a lot because I'm already seeing it now on social media. Not only do we have programs that are able to cull our images for us now, now we have those programs that are able to edit our photos now, mm-hmm. and those, of course, go hand in hand. But now we also have programs where let's say i'm helping a client with their social media and i give them their photos to post we have these pro these ai programs now where you're able to create captions just by putting in the topic such as like copy ai you just put in the topic and it'll come up with the caption for you right you just say what's going on in the photo and it'll generate you know that for you or even just for emails newsletters ebooks so I feel for the future of photography, it's going to help a lot of like emerging photographers for sure. Like Mm -hmm. there were certain things that people who started photography, maybe a a little earlier before the AI stuff came out that we had to go through, like a lot of growing pains, like, like the culling process used to be very tedious. So now if you have somebody who's just getting started in their photography journey, they don't necessarily, if they know about these programs, they don't necessarily have to go through the things that we had to go through and those growing pains we had to go through growing our businesses. So I think it's going to be take a, be a positive thing. Um, in the future, there are going to be some downsides to it, of course. And I think the one downside that kind of crosses my mind is you have people who do editing as, as like a career Mm -hmm. before like the AI stuff came out. But overall, I think AI is going to be an amazing thing for the photography yeah. industry. Two things that to touch on on that. One is the the humans. This has come up a couple of times previously. And from what we've been seeing, the human editors are adapting, right? So they're mm-hmm. either using Imagine in their workflows mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. for their clients and then just basically offering additional retouching. Mm-hmm. Or a lot of them, like the smaller guys and girls, are <laughs> are yes. adapting to the point where they're actually not doing the full edits as a service now. They're just doing final workup. Like they're no, basically no. being the, I'm going to handle your AI workflow for you and then I will do the final touches and this is my fee. So That's so intense. they're not necessarily losing their jobs or they're you know losing their businesses. They're just uh, shifting, right? Shipping. Um, yeah, yeah. Adapting. The other thing is about the the calling aspect. So Imagine has calling coming out. It's in beta, mm-hmm. and you know, so calling and editing all in one app, seamless, fast, 
And it's, cool. the future is really bright there. And there's a lot of other areas that we we plan to go with, with that whole system to make the post-production process even better and make photographers feel more secure and safe and not just use AI for it's not a what we're doing is not a we're going to do it for you it's a we're we're helping you in the process and still giving you the control right for sure. mm -hmm. and the final thing is that you something you mentioned and that is captions right so yeah. i see on that exact topic mm -hmm. there's already apps that you can drop in a photo and it'll recommend it based on the photo itself not even just like the keywords that you want to give it mm -hmm. i foresee uh meta basically adopting okay. open AI or something like that into Instagram so that when you select it, it'll give you the option to pre-fill based on the photo that it sees okay. for free. That's, that's what I see happening in the future, which obviously would make photographers and a whole bunch of other people's lives so much easier than having to yes. brainstorm <laughs> on their own. Right. So absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I and mean, and it could be a, it could be a, we're going to examine your photo and give you a, 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 a caption, or it could be, give us a keyword and we will examine your, you know, photo. And then we will do it based on that little bit of a prompt. So yeah, um, that so, much potential, so much potential. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> major. Yeah. So we have, I've tried to steer you away from Imagine for this entire episode, but now I want to bring you back to Imagine because you are an Imagine user. And so I, I want to know, how did Imagine impact your life? Oh, the whole, wow. Uh, it has impacted my life in the best way possible. Not just over-exaggerating, but <laughs> it's just, it saved me so much time. And I would say the perfect example of that is my boyfriend and I, we would always have like date nights on Friday and Saturday night. And if it's in the middle of busy season, such as the holidays, I have so many galleries to edit. And there were times when we first started dating where I would just be just so caught up just editing galleries that sometimes we wouldn't even make it out to our date nights because mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to finish this gallery. I need to, you know, get it out. You know, I'm trying to get it to my clients, you know, beforehand, mm -hmm. or maybe I might've fallen behind on galleries because something happened. So when Imagine AI came into the picture and it's, I learned about it when I went to a, a conference, which was non-photography related, but I met a photographer there. He was telling me about, oh yeah, I deliver my galleries to my clients within 24 hours. And I said, how the? <laughs> 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 that, that would be my reaction too originally <laughs> well, well that's amazing and he said i'm going to show you how i did it it's called imagine ai and he showed it to me and literally the first time that i used it and i realized how it worked with the um the different profiles that you can use mm -hmm. i was obsessed i'm pretty sure my jaw dropped just because like <laughs> I, I put a gallery in there that just had so many pictures and it was able to basically edit it for me in a, in a style that I liked. And then I just had to go in and just make minor, very minor touches. And yeah. I went from delivering galleries within like two to three weeks to delivering them within a couple of days. If I was really focused, I could get that gallery to you within 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. And I remember there was a client I had, we had an event and it's a company that I shoot with consistently. I typically had a turnaround time for them. For, it was about five to seven days. After I found out about Imagine AI, I used it on the gallery for the event that I had previously captured for them. And I get a phone call from the owner and he goes, Ashley, I checked my email and the gallery's in there. And I said, yeah, it's, it's finished. And he said, that's the quickest you've ever returned the gallery to us. Do you have robots working for you back there or something? And I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> I just switched up my workflow. <laughs> and it was probably the most amazing thing because they were just so happy that I was able to deliver a gallery to them within literally 48 hours of the event. And I was, I didn't tell them that I was going to, so it was just such a nice surprise for them. And so yeah. Imagine AI has just definitely had such a positive impact in my life. And I always tell people about it because I think it's something that they should incorporate into their workflow. You're, you're in a genre that some clients might 
want that more more of that demand of faster turnaround than say mm-hmm. like just a wedding where there's that expectation of it being a month or three months <laughs> for a turnaround mm-hmm. time, right? So yeah. So so being able to to help with that and then also being able to give you your date nights back, that's yes. pretty good. That's pretty yeah, good. It's it's yeah. great. It's great. My boyfriend <laughs> loves it. <laughs> Awesome. So where can listeners learn more about you, connect with you, and of course, see your incredible photography? Yes. So my website is snapsbyash.com, which is S-N-A-P-S-B-Y-A-S-H.com. My Instagram is snapsbyash with the underscore. I am rebranding, so my name is changing soon, but everything will redirect to the new page if you do end up following me after my new website is launched. But I'm also launching my YouTube channel soon. So I know I'm so excited about that. So if you follow my website or follow me on Instagram, there'll be more information on that there because I can't put the name out yet just because we're finalizing some trademark stuff. But um, I'm really excited about that with launching all of that. And feel free to uh, send me a DM if you follow me. I'm, you know, I don't bite. I love meeting new people. So I love (laughs) connecting. (laughs) with people so if you watch this episode and want to say hi like don't be afraid to awesome thank you so much for for hopping on for chatting for sharing such a detailed you know insights into your workflow and for you know allowing everybody to get to know you more i appreciate it i know others listening also appreciate it so thank you thank you thank you for having me scott i really appreciate it Thank you so much, Ashley, for that incredible conversation on all your things, workflows. I know that everybody who listened to this episode is going to walk away with a bunch of fantastic takeaways. You have been listening to Workflows presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows and to find a link to our guest, please go to imagine-ai.com slash podcast. Be a part of the conversation by joining the Imagine community at imagine-ai.com slash community. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.